Mr. Executive, Rod Sterling is here to see you. Great, send him in. It's about time I break the news to him. Mr. Executive. Rod, I'm going to stop you right there. I think it's best if I'm straight with you. We're canceling the Twilight Zone. No, Mr. Executive. I don't think that we are. You see, I've made a discovery. So monumental, it'll reshape the very fabric of the studio. Nay, the entire entertainment industry. Rod, I'm not sure what kind of holiday or cult or human zoo you're planning this time, but the show's done. Just consider yourself lucky we're letting you finish out the rest of this season. But my discovery... Uh, yeah. Go ahead. What if I told you that there was a secret vault full of all the gold reserves of the United States? Enough gold to fund a thousand episodes of the Twilight Zone. Enough to fund the construction of a real Twilight Zone. Rod, are you talking about Fort Knox? That's incredible, Mr. Executive. You never told me you could read minds. Everyone knows about Fort Knox, Rod. It's not a secret. Secret or not, Mr. Executive, I'm putting together a team. Don't worry, we've got a spot for you. We can save the Twilight Zone. We'll get that gold. I'm not trying to save the Twilight Zone. I'm canceling it. Uh, what the hell kind of team would even help you? Well, I'm the brains. <laughs> <laughs> That's the breaking point. <laughs> Sterling has said a lot of crazy things in these intro sketches, but oh boy, that's too far. Just as fucking like, obviously, I'm the uh, brains I mean, of the project. Uh, that is clearly, I'd be the brains. Also, Shit. the sex machine. Like, I'm all of them. <laughs> and I get the woman at the end. Yeah, well, why wouldn't I? I'm the smartest and the sexiest. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm the brains. I've researched the layout and found that the vault is deep underground. The only official entrance is a six-foot-thick door, manned by armed guards. But there's also a tiny ventilation shaft, and you've got the connections to get us close. Get out of my office right now! And of course there's Giuseppe and his dancing monkey trumpet, He's a big Louis Armstrong fan. They hang around outside this very studio. That's our inn, Mr. Executive. Giuseppe serves as the perfect distraction, and the fall guy. And that single tiny ventilation shaft? It'll work perfect as... A passage for trumpet. They irritate the irritant. Flex perplexities. Poise puzzles. Magnify mysteries impose inquiries, and coagulate quantities. But more importantly, they ask one question. Why would you make this? Hello, everyone. Welcome and thank you for listening. This is Why Would You Make This? The only podcast that keeps throwing itself in front of trucks, but somehow walks away completely unscathed every time, making you ask the question, why would you make this? I am Jimmy Time. I'm joined by co-host Huge. How are you, sir? I'm a co-host. Oh, we're peers. <laughs> this is my dream. Well, it's, just, it's just words on paper. God damn. <laughs> I, flew too, I flew too close to the sun. <laughs> uh, also joined by J. Johnson. Wagwan. 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 All right, we watched A Passage for Trumpet, the 32nd episode of the first season of the 1959 Twilight Zone, uh, which first aired May 20th, 1960, wherein a musician, Jack Cluglin, must desire... <laughs> <laughs> you know all Jack Cluglin. <laughs> Jack Cluglin. <laughs> yeah. A musician, Jack Klugman, must decide between life and death. I mean, that's every day. What are you talking about? <laughs> There's no story there at all. Uh, Netflix says that this episode is about a suicidally despondent trumpet player who finds himself in a bizarre world where he seems to be the only moving being except for one helpful musician. But that's wrong. But that's, yeah, it's also wrong. Uh... No, I don't have anything heated debate about right now, yeah, guys. I... Lukewarm debate. Lukewarm debate. Uh, my shoes are okay, right? Lukewarm debate. Should Eric James change his name back to Lukewarm? 
I guess. You right. know? Lukewarm. That's a pretty good gimmick name. I Yo, I would love if there's a tag team. I don't know what their tag team name would be, but one of them's called Lukewarm and one of them's called Max Power. Ooh, yo. You got that off a hairdryer. Yo, didn't I you? don't care where I got it from. <sighs> the hairdryer brothers? I don't know. <laughs> the hairdryer brothers. <laughs> Well, there's got to be a gimmick there. There's a gimmick there somewhere. Are those the two settings on a, on a hair dryer? Luke Warp and Max Power? <laughs> I mean, yeah, the bald guy would definitely know <laughs> what the settings on a hair dryer are. So, uh, All right. I mean, that I'm bald. That's true. That is. So let's go to the truth hour. Hey, has anybody seen Truth Man recently? No. I don't know, man. With, you know, 2020, the fucking elections coming up, I, he's he's a little upset. I don't know if we're going to see him. Things have to be really rough for him. I mean... Ah! Oh. Ooh, we did too much there. Ah! But uh, how's it going, Truth hey, Man? Buddy. Oh, you know... Uh, we're in the future. We are. Yeah. yeah, that's good, right? Mm. Oh, well, I mean, you'd have thought, right? Well, yeah, but, but then you showed up, yeah. So I well, must be wrong. You are. Oh, listen, yeah. truth, man. It's it's not all bad. I, things can't. Be Eighteen as... years we've been in Afghanistan. <sighs> that is true. Woo. But I mean, we it's... gotten a lot accomplished, huh? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Woo. but we liberated them. Oh. <laughs> Oh, oh, from their lives. Oh. <laughs> well, at least, I don't know if you heard truth, man. We we prevented some some World War Three. By... Oh, yeah, we got them WMDs in Iraq. You remember that? They said they were there. That's true that they said they were there. But we but we got a we got a very guilty man from Iran. Right. Just the other day. He, he, he was clearly guilty. Right. I mean, look, we're all guilty. All guilty of falling for this. You know what? Let's just go back to the old thing where I ride the train off into the distance. I'll just set new trends on my trend set of train. Uh... Hats with feathers in them. That's the new trend for Truth Man. That's my new costume. Yeah, that's it. That's what I'm into now. That's the truth. Thanks, Truth Man. Yeah, anytime. Goodbye. Truth Man just left his train here. But he walked away. All right. I don't. Will we ever see him again? Probably. Yeah. He he just shows up. I don't even think he knows what he's doing anymore. <laughs> Doesn't seem like he wants to be here, but he keeps coming. <laughs> he keeps, uh... Yo, every time. It's just a creature of habit now, huh? Aren't we all? Oh, God damn it. Yo. I thought Truth Man left. What happened? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It turns out the truth is contagious. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Ooh. Ooh, so, think... so is that. Whatever yeah. you got. <laughs> is that dyslexia? Is that what happens oh, when it reaches no. its final stages? Oh my god! <laughs> it turns your organs inside I out. I can't breathe the right way anymore. <laughs> but I just no. It'll be good because then I can only breathe carbon dioxide uh -huh. and i'll fix all the problems right well then you just become a plant <laughs> yo that sounds pretty good yeah, yeah. <laughs> nothing wrong until with you start a... we'll trying just to fucking kill mark Wahlberg. Yeah. well i mean he was racist back in the day so <laughs> he said a lot of bad things about back in the day so <laughs> still is yeah, that's true yeah he did Wait. beat that guy to death Ooh. so this episode aired march 20th 1960 let's go back to no i said nope well it's the truth i said it <laughs> i said march 20th so now I also said we're going to go back in time to May 15th, <laughs> 1960. You guys remember that was a cyclical year, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It was like, a, it was like a, a double leap year. We just did the same year twice. <laughs> That's how leap years work. Yeah. <laughs> so May 15th, 1960, the Soviet Union launches Sputnik 4. Um, so, you know, that's cool. Yeah. It's, it's just a ship, right? It wasn't a big deal. I mean, it was a big deal, but it was just a... They just put a ship up there. Yeah. It wasn't people yet. Well, it was a, a fake person. They put a dummy in it to test for people. 
<laughs> Which to me, Soviet Union, it was a prisoner. <laughs> it was a prisoner. <laughs> Oh uh, wait! Are you saying that they call they they call the prisoner a dummy? And no, put I'm him in there. Yeah. Or are you saying are you saying there's <laughs> they, some weird pull... elaborate prison system where they just put mannequins in the cells to be like, no, look, they're full. It's fine. They're full. Yes, we know those famous Soviet gulags full of mannequins <laughs> and crash test dummies. <laughs> Every time Putin comes uh, around, they just home alone the whole prison. <laughs> They'd be like, see, look, everybody's doing their thing. The one guy's playing the, the dice. There are the people. Uh... And every time they're like, you know, it's going great here. I just don't know why there's always music and they're always <laughs> dancing. We could find the source of it. We'd stop it. But... <laughs> it's just yeah. playing the fucking theme song from Tetris over and over again. <laughs> I mean, it's also pretty good. Why stop it? Yeah. yeah. All right, so May 16th, physicist Theodore Maiman focuses a high-powered flash lamp on a silver-coated ruby rod and creates the first working laser. Who would even think to, like, let me cover this ruby in silver? <laughs> Yo, what did I... I read that and I didn't even understand it. What? <laughs> I thought you were referencing Fifth Element, and then I tuned out when I realized you weren't. <laughs> No, there are such things as ruby rods. It's not just... <laughs> I would not have guessed that. All right, so, yeah, no, neither do I. May 17th, Radio Swan was secretly funded and operated by the CIA. Of course it was. By the CIA broadcasting anti-communist propaganda to Cuba from Swan Island near Honduras. Ooh, I, I thought Radio Swan came from a much cooler background, but no, just Swan Island. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> instead of just a, a flock of swans <laughs> hovering around Cuba with antennas on them. With antennas attached to them from, to the ground, like yeah. all the way up. <laughs> There's lots of long wires. Yeah. So it's Swan Island and it's just filled with swans. It's a little too on the nose. Like there's an island called Carrot Island, in, yeah. but it's like in like off like South Carolina or something like that. And it's just nothing but ponies. <laughs> That's misleading. Not well. Should be well, carrots. Should be carrots. No, well, it is carrots. Why do you think the ponies went there? Well, the carrots are gone now. Ponies ate. Yeah. Oh. Well, soon the ponies will be gone too. Who's growing the carrots back? Who's eating the ponies? <laughs> Turns out when they run out of carrots, nobody needs to eat them. <laughs> Turns out when All they run ponies out of carrots, eat yeah, it's each other. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Don't go to Pony. Don't, Don't go to Pony <laughs> Island. It's a massacre. <laughs> it's the biggest, biggest pony cannibalism site in history. May nineteenth, the largest anti-nuclear rally was held in the U.S. Uh, it took place in Madison Square Garden, and seventeen thousand people attended to hear the speeches of Eleanor Roosevelt, Norman Thomas. Alf Landon, Walter, I don't know who any of them are. The are. And the rest. And the rest here on Gilligan's Isle, yeah. <laughs> so my birthday dot ninja. I don't know how you feel about this, but you were a female born somewhere around central India in 1325, and you were a leader major captain. No surprise. Uh, you were also a timid person with talents, and you waited for that to be liberated. And, uh, ooh, you kept, as a lady, you, you were just told to keep smiling. That's oh. not good. That's not good. You wanted to make the world more beautiful. Your physical... I think you might have been like... Like a general concubine. Oh. I don't like that. Yeah, well, thanks a lot, my birthday, Don't Ninja. All right, let's... Come on, let's just move it on. Let's go on to something happy. Let's go on to the best hour. Our favorite hour. Our favorite hour! That Troy McClure hour. Oh, hello, I'm Troy McClure. You might remember me from such musical misadventure films as Sex, Lies, and Audio Tapes, or Trombone Tomahawk. Today... <laughs> <laughs> what are those two words in that order for? <laughs> There's a Kurt Russell movie called Bone Tomahawk, <laughs> which is great. But apparently I'm the only person who's seen it. I guess it. so, yeah. All right. So I liked it. <laughs> Sex, lies, and audio tapes, or trombone tomahawk. 
Today, we're here to talk about coping with the inevitable depression that comes with being an artist. Yo, that's too real. <laughs> <laughs> and that what this episode's about. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. So this episode was directed by Don Medford. Justin don't care what he did. Nope. <laughs> Written by Rod Serling. Yo, I try not to care what he did. <laughs> Starred Jack Klugman. He played Joey Crown. You recognize him in 12 Angry Men? As like you know the good juror, right? He was like the good guy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Number five. Uh, uh, Oscar and the Odd Couple. Mm -hmm. The original. Oh, maybe not. I don't even. Never mind. Because Hollywood's crash. I can't even say that's the original one because I don't know if it's the original one. It's the one everybody knows. And it is. Yeah. yeah cause, or maybe everyone knows the crappy remake. I don't remember. And then he was also Quincy in. Oh, he was Quincy in Quincy and Me. Okay, good. Good for him. Uh, he died in 2012. How was there an entire show that just followed a medical examiner solving crimes? Do they at least medical crimes? Or did he, like, find where someone's stolen car was? <laughs> <laughs> Here's your cat back. Like, did he cut people open and be like, wait a minute. <laughs> this liver doesn't belong in here. <laughs> he stole the car. He stole <laughs> And every so often, they bring in me, and I'm like, I don't know. Maybe you should make him take apart that motorcycle so I can say what's wrong with him. <laughs> it's like he's house, and I'm like that. I don't remember. Whatever that guy he went to. Wilson? I don't remember. Bad reference. Never mind. Uh, John Anderson plays Gabriel. You remember him from Psycho? That's the 1960 Psycho. That's the mm -hmm. famous one. Yep. Uh, the 1965 The Satan Bug. Or in the series MacGyver, 1958 MacGyver. He died in 92. Finally, we have Frank Wolf as Baron. Who's that? He's the uh, club owner. There wasn't really another... Oh, okay. I wasn't sure if that was him or the, um, yeah. the shopkeep <laughs> guy. Uh, you remember him from the 1959 Wasp Woman? It's my favorite Marvel film. <laughs> <laughs> the 1961 Atlas... And the 1968 The Great Silence, he died in 71. Let's start the episode. <laughs> Opening narration. Joey Crown, musician with an odd, intense face whose life is a quest for impossible things like flowers in concrete or trying to pluck a note of music out of thin air and put it under a glass of treasure. Uh, put it under a glass to treasure. That's the whole opening narration? Well, there's like a break. <laughs> oh, okay. So, Joe, yeah, we get, we're in an alley, and Joey nervously waits behind uh, a club. We see someone inside playing trumpet. Joey pulls out his own trumpet, like, I don't know. I thought, like, maybe he was next or something. Like, that's what I thought, too. Yeah, first, that's what yeah. I thought. But he's, like, also in an alley behind the place. Yeah, I kind of figured that was just how the type of way that, that was. Like, they don't have a waiting room. It's just the stage in the back door. <laughs> stage right to the back door. Yeah, I gotta get out of here. I just said the seven naughty words bit i gotta go yeah, I, yeah, yeah. <laughs> again another bad reference, another bad reference. <laughs> so music stops uh people come out joey asks one of them uh, this is baron i guess yeah uh, oh you got a spot for me tonight can i play and he's like i don't know last time you stunk up the place and uh it's because you were drunk and joey's like i've been sober for six or seven months i still have some years left don't treat me like an old man like it's we can do this we can do and then blink blink yeah. alcohol falls out of his pocket and he's like oh jeez I'm trash like you can see it in his face he's like oh man that's just not good for me so Barry uh, or excuse me Baron gives him money out of pity he's like ah for old times when you had zits cause he's the cartoon dog from fucking Looney Tunes uh, yo but when Baron like he gives him the pity money and he's like, yeah. "For when you had it, but it's gone. You <laughs> threw it away because you were drunk. Why? Why'd you ruin your life, you bum? You bum. Holy shit! Yo. Yo, but then his fucking response, I was just like, "Yo, dude, <sighs> this is like this might be one of the best episodes of the Twilight Zone so far. Like yeah. it is, yeah. and I think it's because Klugman is a good actor. Oh hell yeah, uh." Yeah. yeah, this is maybe just his close to home. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, Joey says his life is awful and sad. He'll always be alone, but when he drinks, he doesn't feel sad. And he's Gabriel with a golden horn. Only when he's drunk. Joey leaves down the alley. He's tired. Uh, he's nothing. What? Uh, he's nothing. 
He's tired of hanging around. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's not written well. So yeah, he's nothing. He's tired of writing around. He plays the trumpet and then he struggles to play. <laughs> then we get the opening narration continued. Joey Crown, musician with an odd, intense face, who in a moment will try to leave Earth and discover the middle ground, the place we call the Twilight Zone. Not, not much of a continuation there. Yeah, right. Half of it was the first half. And like... <laughs> yeah, it just repeated again. So we go to a pawn shop. Uh, this is not Joey's first time here. Uh, but this time, he's selling the trumpet. So the clerk, Nate, offers him eight and a half, he says. Yeah. And I was like, oh, okay. Eight, $850 for a horn, right? That makes sense to me. No, $8 and 50 cents American. Yo, what? Uh... Holy for crap. For your livelihood. And Joey's like, all right, I can get... Yo, he he got drugs, so it must have been a lot of booze, the $8 back then, because <laughs> yeah. he came out like... <laughs> <laughs> That's right. He did the Spider-Man 3. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I will say, he certainly is more charming. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, he does bow to a lady. <laughs> that was the first ever recorded case of milady. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that's where he comes out of the bar. He passes a uh, gestures to a passing woman. He staggers over to the pawn shop and he sees Nate putting. <laughs> I wasn't sure if this is what was actually happening, or but it was just like a weird. He sees Nate putting a trumpet in the window for twenty five dollars, and he taps on the window. <laughs> And he's like, uh, uh, uh. <laughs> and Nate's like, come on, I gotta make money. I can't just give it away. You don't understand how this works. I gotta do an upkeep. I gotta feed my family. You have no responsibilities. You got nothing. You don't get it. I need to, there's a market. There's a market. <laughs> <laughs> and the whole time, Joe's just like, uh, like his face literally <laughs> on the glass. Uh. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> Just like the market, you don't get the market. <laughs> Stop pestering me with your no. relentless logic. <laughs> <laughs> it was amazing. Give me, give me a feature length film of that. <laughs> the angry Clark <laughs> and the vacant vagrant, like yeah, the guy just drunkenly slobbered on the window. That was literally all I did. Uh, 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 what do you mean? That 25 <laughs> seven, I can't believe you got money on What I get <laughs> Yo, does that shopkeeper have some guilt about what he's doing? <laughs> I, I don't it. know. Hmm. <laughs> Yo. Oh, my Praying God. off poor drunks <laughs> and making profit on them. Right, because, I mean, I see, I thought it said he, I, I'm finally selling it. I, I thought that that was his like thing that he does like he always sells it for booze and then later on sobers up makes some money buys it back realizes he can't play and he gets well, no, no, sad no. again because and... he's like this time i'm selling it normally when you pawn it you're yeah. like oh all right i'll give you seven dollars to pawn it in a week you'll pay me back eight or you'll pay me back nine oh. but when when you sell it then it's like the the pawn shop is just gonna sell it for whatever they can which in this case yeah is like fucking Whatever math is quadruple but, like, the money. I, I know how Funko Land works. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. The shop keeps like you have nothing. Yeah, you, you, you have nothing in your life. You have nothing. And Joey's like, yeah, I got nothing at all. No responsibilities. Nobody worried. It's great. I got nothing. I got nothing. And then he leans against a street post. And he sees a truck coming down a road, and he's like, yeah, I'm going to jump in front of it. <laughs> yeah. And he sort of jumps in front of it. He kind of just, like, falls off the post, yeah. and the driver gets way too close to the curb. Yeah. And uh, boom, he hits him. We hear a woman scream, and it's like, yo, he is dead. And we get a blackout. Really? A blackout happened this late? Mm. That's crazy. Um, so... We'd like to thank our first sponsor, the One Stop Pawn Shop. You're pawning your plap. You're pawning your stuff, and we know why. So we'll we'll save you a trip when your mouth gets dry. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I like where this is going. <laughs> <laughs> 
You're pointing your stuff, and we know why. We'll save you a trip when your mouth gets dry. Oh, yo, I don't understand poetry. <laughs> <laughs> I legit don't get poetry, so I was like, I don't know what the fuck's happening here. Oh, it's oh rhyming. Oh. <laughs> Yo, yo! if you want to kill me, if you want to kill me, you write a poem about fractions. <laughs> and I'll read that shit backwards and the universe will open up and it'll swallow me. <laughs> All right, let, they paid money. Let's give them some respect here. Let's give them some respect here. We'd like to thank our first sponsor, the One Stop Pawn Shop. You're pawning your stuff and we know why. We'll save you a trip when your mouth gets dry. The only fully bonded and accredited pawn sh- bar slash pawn shop in the tri-state area. You've got junk, and we need. <laughs> You've got junk and need to get drunk, get cash or get trashed. Only at the one stop pawn shop, yo. I don't fucking get what rhyming is. <laughs> Apparently, I don't know what rhyming is. <laughs> I don't get it at all. Uh, yo, is this what it's like? Like you just reach a certain age of old white man and you forget how rhyming works and then it's just like, ah, the youth of today in their rap. I don't get it. <laughs> I can't do it so it's wrong. It's all wrong. <sighs> yo, and then everyone laughs at you. That's exactly what getting old is. No one oh, takes you seriously crap. anymore. Yo. They just point and laugh and then you just get angry and angrier. Oh, man. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> One stop on shop. <laughs> <laughs> so we go back to the street, and it's nighttime. Joey wakes up, and it's dark out. A cop is standing near him. Joey insists, oh, look, I'm not like a drunk vagrant or anything like that. I'm just a guy who, uh, hello? The cop leaves. Uh, Joey walks down the road. He finds a guy in front of the movie theater and asks him for a light. But the guy ignores him and keeps walking. He asks another guy for a match. That guy ignores him too. Joey tries a woman in the ticket booth, but she ignores him even though he is like screaming. I'm pretty sure that like if you pay attention, there's a scene where the actor is like, yeah, Yeah, because he is (laughs) screaming right at her. Yeah. Uh, He realizes, okay, something's definitely wrong. And he walks over to a mirror and he has no reflection. (laughs) Yeah, does he? Well... (laughs) He has a, what, a vaguely ghost-like yeah, reflection? Yeah, he has a ghost <laughs> reflection. Uh, he's shook because someone's pulling a gag on him. And I'm just like, yeah, I, I love this. I love this Twilight Zone logic of, hang on. Someone's pulling a <laughs> grotesquely elaborate gag on specifically me. <laughs> yeah. I'm not going to leave the area. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I need the bottom of this. <laughs> the, the cops and the movie theater, they're all in on <laughs> yeah. it. Yeah. They're all focused on me and how they can mess with me. So the woman in the ticket booth ignores him and guys come out of the theater and lights a cigarette. He's like, oh, finally, I'm getting a light. And, but the guy ignores him and walks away and he goes back to the mirror and he's like, oh, my God, I must be dead as something. Plain old deceased. <laughs> they got to spell it out for you in the Twilight yeah. Zone. They got to spell it out. Uh first he's like oh cool i can start like you know i'm a ghost and i, I haunt people I, I like people walking by and he's like i'm haunting you <laughs> but then i like i don't know how but someone walks by and he goes bougie bougie <laughs> <laughs> and i was like what i think it's the most confused i've ever been in any twilight zone <laughs> episode i've ever seen yeah bougie bougie <laughs> Bougie bougie. Sir, what do you think a ghost sounds like? <laughs> you know those fancy ghosts? <laughs> bougie, bougie bougie. Ghosts. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Amazing. Uh, so yeah, well, at least I'm finally successful at something. Uh, another ad break? Yeah. Already? No, you know what? I think you did what I did, because we both watched it on Netflix, which is, I don't think that that was an ad break. I think the character blacked out. I don't think that was a show blackout. Ah. I think that was the character but blacking out. But I don't think out. there's another blackout. I There must have been one earlier that like you didn't notice, and I didn't notice either, because that was the first blackout I noticed. But I was like, <clears throat> it's weird for them to structure the two mm. commercials so closer together. So I I think that was just the character blacking out. So uh, whatever, we get another ad break. Do you love your town? 
Do you also have crippling antisocial tendencies? Oh, boy. <laughs> Can't wait to get to the rest of this. Then come down... Oh, then come on down to good old Gabe's Society Semi-Simulator. You won't be alone, but you won't be bothered. Our simulated town folk will go out of their lives... To well, uh, our simulated town folk will go on about their lives, totally oblivious to your presence. Crippling anxiety? Hatred of small talk? Come on down to good old Gabe's. We'll take the social out of society. I don't think I read that right, but <laughs> <laughs> I certainly well, said it. Or someone didn't write it right. Yeah, Whatever. Hey, the one. Hey, that's what collaboration must be. <laughs> yeah, everyone just does <laughs> things wrong. <laughs> so we go uh, into a bar, right? We're in a bar now or something. Hmm. And yeah, none of the patrons notice Joey or see him or hear him. And Joey's like, hey, nobody notices or sees me. Then I guess you won't see me take this booze and drink it. Hey, life not so bad. Uh, Getting ghost drunk over here. And then he gets like real sentimental. And he's like, oh, I don't even notice anybody in this bar anymore. I remember Charlie. He bought me this real nice record. Nice thing like old Charlie. What a softy Charlie. Oh, it was so nice of him. Oh, boy, Charlie. I'm in love with Charlie. Yeah, really. Uh, and we go back to the alley behind the club. And Joey listens to the trumpet player in the club from the alley. Uh, then the door closes. Like it gets slammed shut or whatever. And he hears another trumpet being played from down the alley. And he's like, what the hell? Where's it coming from? And he starts running after it. And he sees a man playing. And he's like, wow, that's the best. And he's like, thanks, pal. He's like, you can hear me. You can Whoa. see me. Oh, my God. You must be dead, too. Yeah, you're dead, too. And it's like, well, yeah, yeah, sort of, in a way. And the man's like, hey, you want to play my trumpet? Go ahead. And I'm like, gross. <laughs> <laughs> The, the weirdest part is, I don't know if you notice this, and maybe this is how trumpets work. Yeah. Every time he goes to play it, he like... He's like... Hum. No, he like puts his whole mouth yeah, around whole the mouth. Like, and then the like, whole kind of, mouthpiece, yeah. And then he goes back with it. So yeah. Like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> oh. I, maybe it's him like reminding himself, like, play it good, because otherwise, <laughs> oh, like, that's what we got. That's the only option, buddy. <laughs> Gotta make money somehow. Either your, your lips work this way or your lips work another way. Uh, so Joey plays for a bit and, you know, it's, it's pretty good. Mm. Pretty good. And he's like, oh, who are you? And the man tells Joey that, oh, you know, you're not dead. Everybody else is dead. I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> they're all ghosts and they don't know. And I was like, oh, it's like a metaphor. Like they're, they're, they're not really paying attention to life or something mm. like that. And he's like. No, you're alive and this is limbo. And I was like, that makes less sense. <laughs> Stop talking. Stop. The longer you talk, the less I'm interested in your religion. <laughs> Next, you're going to tell me that your savior is going to come back and rule for a thousand yeah. years. And then after that, he's just going to like, give it up and go home. <laughs> and, and just say, man, start over. <laughs> <laughs> nice party. See you next time. Like, what are you... <laughs> so... Uh, yeah, Joey is in the middle of light and shadow. He is in the realm of... Mm. I don't really go that far, but yeah, it's obvious. Yeah. Uh, and he's like, which do you prefer, Joey? Do you want to be alive or do you want to be dead? And Joey's like, oh... I, feel like he's like, I don't know, Abe Lincoln. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I don't know. Yo. <laughs> uh, he used to feel like he had bad luck, but he forgot about all the good things, and now he just wants to go back and experience all the good things. And the man says, well, you can go back, but no more suicide. <laughs> he compliments Joey's talent and tells him not to waste it. Uh, the man goes to leave and Joey's like, Hey, what's your name? My name? My name's Gabe. Gabe. Short for Gabriel. Like the angel? <laughs> Gabriel the angel. From the Bible. Like, yeah. They, yeah. they spell it out aggressively. Uh, now go on, get another chance at life. And then Gabe vanishes. <laughs> we go outside the pawn shop. Joey returns uh, to where he was hit. And he gets up and he's fine now. And the... the uh... Oh, yeah, you do this. So, yeah, he looks in the... He stares at the trumpet in the window. He's like, oh, I'm back to normal. And... <laughs> People help him up. And the truck driver gets out and he goes, oh, man, you okay? You're all right? Hey, listen, I haven't had an accident. <laughs> uh... Why don't you just take this money and no doctors, right? No doctors? Yeah. And he puts it in his hand and runs away. Yeah. And so uh, obviously what you do is you say, yeah, 
yeah, no doctors. And then later on, you get the doctors. Yeah, of course. And he takes the money that the guy gives him, and he goes in the pawn shop, and he buys the trumpet back. And he's like, ah, he's like playing with like, ah, you got a good life. Ah, where's the money going? Oh, you know. I got a hot debate. Uh-oh, oh, here it is. Uh-huh. Do you think he paid a full price for that trumpet? Yeah. Really? You yeah. just think, uh Why? What is your alternative option? He gave I don't it back know. to him, same price? Well, not same price, but like, yo, man, I know you bought it for me for $8. Give me a break on that fucking $25. 60 you double your money today. <laughs> no, right? It's capitalism. He's it, just you like, know, you know, nope, you have an emotional <laughs> chat for that trumpet. Fuck you, $25. <laughs> Honestly, yeah, because I feel like the happy, like, of like, he's getting his life back of it doesn't involve negotiation. Yeah, it's just here. You give me my thing, and we're all happy. It's yeah. not like here's my money. You go well, two fifty. Well, seven, this seven eighty. <laughs> and I was like, oh, he's got his thing. Yeah, happy. You know, good for him. And then it goes to the rooftop, and I'm like, oh no, what's he gonna do? <laughs> oh no. <laughs> well, he said no more jumping in front of trucks. <laughs> oh no, he said no more suicide. But... Uh, so Joey's playing his trumpet. <laughs> That's what trumpets sound like, in case you didn't know. A yeah. uh, woman overhears him and compliments his playing. She says she's new in town. and Was she just folding her laundry on the roof? I think so, yeah. Is that... Yeah. Oh, yeah. So where'd, where'd you do the laundry that you're now going up onto the roof to fold it? Basement. <laughs> <laughs> also, what are the odds of me, like, putting down a shirt and then a gust of wind just blowing it off the roof? <laughs> Or worse, what if a city hawk takes it for its nest? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, she's new in town, and she's like, "Hey, play some more of that." And he's like, "Yeah, I'll play as long as you want. I'll show you around the city if you want, and I'll shake and show you all the places in the world." And she's like, "Yeah, I'd like that." And he's like, "Oh boy, this place and that place and over there and these places and those places." And then the closing narration is Joey Crown, who makes music. And who discovers something about life that it can be rich and rewarding and full of beauty, just like the music he played. If a person would only pause to look and listen, Joey Crown, who got his clue in the Twilight Zone. Yo, I fucking cried like whole like <laughs> I've never experienced the Twilight Zone with so much like positivity. Yeah, right. Yo, it was overwhelming. This like, episode was like oddly genuine it was it was, yeah. yeah it it was it got to me ross early reached yeah. out was like hey man life gets hard sometimes but don't kill yourself today uh, maybe i i do think it has a bit of a simplistic definitely old school uh thoughts on depression right where it's just yeah. like listen you just forgot about all the good stuff you can fix it it's fine yeah. Yeah. you know but i mean yo i fucking i was Dumb enough to reach out at work. Oh, what a mistake that was. They asked me, they're like, what's wrong? You seem like distant stuff. I was like, well, the fucking truth is I have depression. I've, I've been diagnosed with severe to moderate to severe depression. And sometimes it, it's re- like it really, really affects me. And I was trying to explain it to them and how it works. And like one of them got it. And I, I really appreciate that. He like I could tell he didn't get it, but he was trying to get it. And he, yeah. he understood at least enough to, to that made me OK. And another guy was like, ah, I don't know. What do you have to be depressed about? What is it? I think you just need to get laid. And I was just like, dude, yeah. I, like, I don't want to talk to you anymore. Because this is, <laughs> yeah. this is, you're making it worse right now. Yeah. What do I have to be depressed about? This conversation. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, that's like, that was the simplistic answer that it had mm-hmm. to depression. It was just find a lady that you like. Oh, and just have good. sex. Because and- as we all know. Ladies really simplify your life. Yeah. And bring you only constant joy. <laughs> yeah, we, we learned that in the uh, last episode, right? Well, once you get a lady, you're just completely happy. Until you try and poison her. Yeah. And the episode before that, where you have your wife, you're like, baby, I need you, don't leave. And she's like, I if you didn't call me, I wouldn't have, but now I will. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even have plans today, Yo. but now I'll make some. <laughs> Holy shit, man. That's still, that is still that is so evil, it's cartoonishly great. Like, it's good. <laughs> like, oh my gosh, she had a mustache she was twirling <laughs> while she was on the other <laughs> end of that phone. Time just me the, the train track. Just the one scene, too. Yeah. Um, all right, so tropes and morals. Uh, 
Uh, you didn't, whatever. I never, I didn't tell you to do that anymore. So count. Yeah, count everybody they have. It's a lot. You only write down some of them. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's probably like uh, I'll forty-three. Guess... <laughs> nope, that can't be right. Probably more like ten. Uh, so we have uh, an Aesop's or an Aesop. Which is don't throw away your life so quickly because things will get better in due time. Is that what an Aesop's fable is? Well, Where it's like it's any kind of moral or it's lesson. Just a moral, right? really? Yeah, uh, I think an Aesop is just anything with like a moral at the end of it. Just an archaic pronunciation. Uh, the alcoholic, obviously. Yeah. Joey's an alcoholic. Uh, despair event horizon, which is where you're at the the. The end point where you're like, yeah. there it is. Everything, there's nothing can get worse, and everything can't get better either. So I'll kill myself. Uh, missing reflection, which when Joey looks into the mirror and kind of sort of doesn't have a reflection because he's in limbo. Mm. Purgatory in limbo, which you know, yeah, limbo. And wham line when he's like, you can call me Gabe. Shut for Gabriel. Yeah. At least they didn't do a sting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, I guess I don't know what that is. I don't know if that's also a brick joke that we learned in the last episode. Oh, because, because he, he sets, sets up. up. He sets yeah. it up. I'm like Gabriel with the horn. Yeah, and yeah. Now there's Gabriel with his horn. Is that yeah. a thing he does in the Bible? Play the horn? Do you ask him, the wrong guy? <laughs> you, yeah. knew, you knew about the millennium. Yeah, I looked it up for an hour, <laughs> and then I ranted about it for an hour. Like... <laughs> Uh, why would you make this? I, again, I Sterling was dealing. really believe like Sterling was severely depressed with his yeah. life. Yep. And this was him trying to be like, yo, I got to reach out. I got to be like, listen, I know it's bad. You know it's bad, but it'll get better. Hopefully it will. I'm lying to people. <laughs> <laughs> if I say it gets better. It's got to get better. Enough right? times. I've been saying that since 20. 20 uh, all of them. <laughs> since I've been 20. 20 oh, oh. <laughs> A hanging Chad debacle really fucking started it off. Yeah. <laughs> we were like, well, surely this is the lowest point we reach, right? Here in 20 <laughs> oh, oh. I bet it can't get worse. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, next episode is called Mr. Beavis. Next week, you'll mm. meet the occupant of yeah, this desk. Oh, yeah. uh, like... you both know. No. <laughs> yeah. You're here for a treat. Oh, boy. Uh... Next week, you'll meet the occupant of this desk, whose name is James B.W. Beavis, mm. a warm and winning 20th century oddball about a mile and a half from the norm. Oh, boy. He likes things like zither music, little kids, and stuff <laughs> like this. He motions to a stuffed squirrel he is holding. Orson Bean <laughs> stars next week in the Twilight Zone as Mr. Bevis. Or is it Mr. Beavis? No, oh, it's Mr. Bevis. Oh, okay. Uh, and Henry Jones plays his guardian angel. He's kind of a, an oddball. He's he's this kind of oddball. What? Does he point to something? I don't know. I don't, I don't know. He's an oddball like a stuffed squirrel. Yeah. He, what is zither music? Look that up right now. Look it up for real. Don't, <laughs> we both don't, were just like... don't fake look it up. Look it up for real. <laughs> uh, any string musical instrument whose strings are the same length as its soundboard. The European... Oh, it's one of those, like, it looks like a harp, but... But it's on a wood? Yeah. It's like a harp piano? Yeah. Just like a washboard? Yeah, 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 but like a like, stri a like a string washboard. Yeah, like an auto harp or uh... <laughs> an auto harp. I hate those manual harps. <laughs> we have to crank them. <laughs> Yo, I don't, I don't care what anybody says. I think bean is the funniest <laughs> word. <laughs> In like, I don't add bean to it, and it's hilarious. Orson Wells, mm -mm. Orson, Orson bean. bean, comic genius. Yo, I still think about that thing you told me that one time where you were at the beach and those kids were like, we got to get back to the bean fort. We need to re-bean. <laughs> <laughs> They're beating us from every side. Yo. Damn that bean more. Yeah. W bean, W2. Yeah, that's yeah. we need to re-bean. 
I think about like every day. I think about that thing. <laughs> yeah. What did those kids mean? Yeah, yeah. Life is hard, <laughs> no. but if I can just get up tomorrow, I can rebean. <laughs> no, there's a Reddit called Beans and Things, and I send that shit to my coworkers <laughs> all the time, and they're like, "Why? <laughs> what are you doing?" Uh, and like, who doesn't love the the meme of the dude in the the movie theater eating beans? <laughs> This guy's eating beans. This dude's eating beans. I was watching Cars 2. And then I was eating baked beans in the theater watching Cars 2. And then I spilt them all over myself. And these black... I don't know why. I looked at the meme recently and it specifically said... And these black t- teenagers started yelling at me. This N-word's eating beans. <laughs> <laughs> this dude's eating beans. <laughs> Oh my god. Alright, so I think what's gonna happen is the dude and his guardian angel are gonna eat beans the whole episode. <laughs> He's gonna come up with a new type of bean. He's gonna play a zither and eat some beans. <laughs> He's gonna be the bean president. VictoryProWrestling.com Returns live to Center East Long Island, New York on February 22nd. For part two of six of the <laughs> King of New York tournament. That's right. Part two of six. That could be right. That could be right. <laughs> it shouldn't no. be, but no. it could be. It could be. And you can see me live in person. <laughs> in color, baby. In color. Unless you wear your black and white shades, and then I'll be in black and white. Either way, there will be beans sold at the concession stand for the low price of $3 a bean. Yes. <laughs> $3 a bean? God damn. Yeah, they're really good beans, though. And, uh... Don't, don't forget, if you show up, you can also you can also get slapped by EJ. Yeah. Eric James giving out slaps. Yeah. He'll, uh, what, slap your dad for $5, right? Yeah. Bring bring your own beans and get a discount on tickets. Back you heard it here first. <laughs> Two dollar grandma slaps. Yeah. With the left hand. Mm-hmm. It's all there. VPW folks. Yeah, it is. VictoryProWrestling.com. You know it. To check it out. That's uh, right. Huge. Where are you selling beans and slapping grandmas? Well, you know. Those. I, you know what? I know where. Because they're both the same thing at the <gasps> same place. SagGrandCam.com. <sighs> It's actually .gov. We've been sponsored, folks. Uh, I think you mean subsidized? What do you mean? (laughs) Sponsored? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, no. (laughs) The first official government porn site. (laughs) (laughs) Sagram camps. They're cutting Medicare, but adding San Grand right. No, it is the only website that is tax deductible. <laughs> Pleasure yourself twice a year. One time. Yeah. <laughs> and feel guilty for six months out of the year that you've just done it. And then not feel guilty when you get your taxes and go, ooh, the San Grand Cam was a write off. <laughs> <laughs> I go there so much, I put my kids through school with the write offs. You just write it off. <laughs> you just write it off, and then don't give that paper to anybody or ever pay your taxes, and you're fine. So, yeah, that's where yep. Huge is. Yeah. He's at sagramcam.com. Mm-hmm. Uh, www.ymt.com still has places where you can download episodes or links for where you can also listen to them on the go or maybe on the stay, whatever. And buy things. You can also buy things. Buy them now. Hopefully more things by then. There's a, the links to the YouTube, but we're always doing some wacky and silly things. And, we're, uh, we're working on a mug. We, we, got, are, we got mugs. We do now, you son of a bitch. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, the YouTube always has pre-show clips, so you can check things out where we say that has nothing to do with the show, but uh, it's just ridiculous. Really. It's actually, it's not true. it has things to do with the show, but not directly enough that it's in the show. Why am I explaining things this elaborately? Because it's the Twilight Zone. That's why. So in the pre-show, we don't we just jab around about nothing. But in the mid between the two, that's when we start talking about rubes and things and ooh, things and such. Ooh. That's the real juicy content. I'm mean, gonna ask you. What do you guys think? I feel like it's too wordy. I don't know. But what do you think about calling the fans X cubes? 
X, X cubes. Because, like, Rubik's cubes, they're rubes, but just call them X cubes. Uh, maybe. Yeah? Maybe. All right. We're, we're going to workshop. It, it sounds a little, like, like college-y. <laughs> you know, it sounds a little, la- a little Latin-y, maybe, you know? X cubes, you X cubes. Mm-hmm. 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 I'm just saying. You want to handle this one? Uh, no, we can try it out. You know okay. what I mean? Because I want to go back to old school where we insult people to their faces and they're like, <laughs> I don't understand uh, that language, so I don't know what you're saying. But you say it with a smile on your face. So yeah, yeah. Like They don't know. Like, uh, uh, I, I found out recently that, uh, uh, oh, what's his name? The guy who used to come out and sing the Russian national anthem in the WWE. Uh, uh, Dostoevsky. Vladimir Kozlov? Nope. And no. Nope. Before that. Double, Nikolai double Volkov. E. Oh, Nikolai Volkov. <laughs> Nikolai Volkov. Apparently, when he would come out and be like, bro, mm-hmm. he would send me a thing. Apparently, at some point, he would be like, suck on my crotch. Because <laughs> <laughs> they couldn't understand the language. So, uh, he'd be like, whatever. And I'm saying, I want to go back to that type of old school where we call people, like, you know, dumb rubes, but in, like, a different language so they don't get it. Buy one, get one. <laughs> I promise you people that will be on a shirt. I don't know how, but he will be confused about it. I'll just take the free one. I'll just take the free one. What am I going to buy? For? I'm going to get one for free. It's it's a full paragraph. <laughs> you know, I, I don't understand. It, it's just I don't care. hayseed ramblings for three and a half paragraphs all printed on a shirt. Ooh, what if it's Hasey Ramblins in the shape of a confused Hayseed? <laughs> Ooh. 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 Look at this. All over print fanny packs. All over print totes. Wow, there's a lot of options for, yeah. for putting shit on our yeah. shop. Did you do that because I said mugs? Yes. Yeah. yeah. I, he already looked them up. I saw it. There's mugs. It's, yo, all right. So Classic dad hat. Ooh. We'll, we'll be having dad hats and <laughs> Russell Bean mugs and <laughs> all that type of greatness. Oh, at www.ymt.com. Uh, so the intro music is falling off your love by Kill Paris. And for you, Eugene J. Delta, I am Jimmy Time. Please remember that without the mistakes of others, we'd be forced to endure the pain of failure ourselves. Support the arts. Meow. The preceding recording is for entertainment purposes only, and the views expressed in this podcast do not necessarily represent the views of Why Would You Make This, its owners, employees, or associates.